Okay, we're going to look at uh, quartiles. Quartiles mean the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile. The lower quartile is a value which is one quarter of the way through the distribution. The upper quartile is a value which is three quarters of the way through the distribution, and the median is a middle value, so halfway through the distribution. Okay, a couple of things which are important here. Uh, we have got on group data and we have got group data. So for the on group data, say you had n is equal to nine, so you had nine values. Uh, once you order them, that's important, uh, you define your lower quartile, it would be 9 plus 1, which is 10, and then times a quarter. So a quarter times 10 is going to be 2.5. So the lower quartile would be the 2.5 value. Your lower quartile is not 2.5, it's a 2.5 value. So 2.5 value means halfway between the second value and the third value. Okay. Uh, likewise, for the median, it would be a, a half times 9 plus 1, so a half times 10, so it would be the fifth value, so that's easy to find, just line them up and order them, and then find which one is the fifth value, and so on. Okay, uh, for the group data, it's a wee bit different, you know, we're going to see two examples on both of these. For group data, if you have got, if you had 10 values, but they were grouped, then it would just be a quarter times 10, sorry, over 9 values we use in the last one, if we had 9 values, and they were grouped, it would be a quarter times 9. So that's just me, 9 over 4. 9 over 4, 4 goes into 9 twice, with 1 left over, so it is 2 and a quarter value. And we'll see how we can do that uh, if we need to. Quite often, we won't need to do that. So uh, quite often, we won't need to do that. Quite often, uh, it is good enough just to find halfway between the thing. We don't need to do what's called linear interpolation, but we'll see that in the next couple of examples. Okay, same idea. Uh, same idea on the uh, for the median. For the median, it would just be a half times the nine, half times the nine, so it's just going to be four and a half value, and so on. Okay, if we just move on down, and have we look at this first example? Okay, it says find Q1, Q2, Q3, and the IQR. So that's the interquartile range of the, these numbers here. So first thing to notice is that these values are already ordered. So these values are ordered already. So there's no need for you to do anything. If they were not in ascending order, put them in ascending order. So that's important because you can't find the middle value if they're not in order, or you can't find the lower quartile if they're not in order. So here we've got eight values. So n is equal to eight. And then our q1, our lower quartile, uh, Q1 is, was just equal to a quarter times your n plus 1 times that value. So in this case, that's a quarter times 8 plus 1 is 9. So a quarter times a 9 value is 2 and a quarter. Okay, right. mentioned this earlier on. Sometimes it's not necessary to uh, do it uh, to find exactly 2 and a quarter value. So this means this is a quarter of the way between the second value and the third value. There's no need. So all we have to do here is find halfway between the two things. So I think it says that, yep, it says that over this box, so that's okay. Uh, so your second value is eight. Your uh, third, oh, sorry, my second, it's halfway between my, yep, halfway between my second, uh, my second value and my third value. So it's gonna be uh, eight plus 10. And divide by 2, which is just going to be equal to 9. Okay, very easy. My Q2 is going to be a half times the n plus 1. So that's going to be a half times 9, which is going to be the 4 and a half value. So that's my halfway between my fourth value. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. My fourth value is 10. My fifth value is 15. Halfway between the 10 and the 15. 10 plus 15 divided by 2 is going to be 12.5. And my Q3 is going to be 3 quarters of the way through the distribution. So 3 quarters upon n plus 1 value. And then if we do that, that's going to be 3 quarters times 9. And if you do that out, you're going to get, again, I probably just do it on the calculator, 6 and 3 quarters value. So again, good enough just to find halfway between your 6th value and your 7th value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5, 6th value is 16, 7th value is 20, that's a nice easy one, so that's just going to be 18. Okay, the last thing we want to do then is to find our, sorry, find our interquartile range. Interquartile range, it's set up above, which I didn't really, I don't think I wrote in, I don't think I mentioned, uh, but interquartile range is your upper quartile minus your lower quartile. Basically, it's important for us to know the middle 50% of the distribution. That's an important. You're always going to have extremities in a, in a, at either end of a distribution, but the middle 50% really gives you quite a good reflection of what's going on and quite a good indication of what's going on. So 18 minus 9, and in this case, the interquartile range is just 9. Okay, we're now going to look at uh, using linear interpolation with group data. Okay, uh, in the past, what we would have done if you want to find the median, uh, from a set of group data is you would have set up a cumulative frequency table and then drawn a cumulative frequency graph or a cumulative frequency curve or cumulative frequency OGI from that. You then would have gone uh, halfway up your vertical axes and then gone across and then down. Uh, so you basically would have had a graph very, very roughly like this. So it would have looked like that and then you would have gone halfway across from whatever the height would be and then down, and that would have been your median. So it wasn't a very accurate, or not, well, not a great mathematical way of doing it. We're going to look now at a different way of doing it. There is a formula here, which will mean absolutely nothing to you until we see the examples, we'll go straight on to it. Okay, so here's our example. It says find an estimate of the mean, uh, so the median mass, and the masses are grouped in a group frequency form. So you've got 60 to 64, 65 to 69, 70 to 74, 75 to 79, uh, 80 to 84, 85 to 89, and you've got the corresponding frequencies. Notice I've added in another row, which is a cumulative frequency row. So cumulative frequency really is just a running total of the frequencies. So my first cumulative frequency uh, is 2, then add another 6 is 8, add 12 is 20, add 14 is 34, add 10 is, sorry, add 10 is 44, Add 5 is 49. So we want to find our median. So first thing we need to do is find the position of the median. So for a grouped frequency table, a group frequency distribution, the median is a half times the nth value. So that's different than what we did in the previous example. It wasn't a group one, so you had to have n plus 1. If it's grouped, you don't need the plus 1. So it's just a half times the n. So in this case, a half times the 49, uh, 49th value. And if you do that, you're just going to get the 24.5 value, uh, value. And that's it. So we need to find where the 24.5 value is going to be. So what we know here is up to this point, this is my first two values are in this category, then value 3 up to value 8 are in this one, and then value 9 up to value 20 are in this one. So we're going to assume that the 20th value is equal to the very last thing it could possibly be in this interval. So what we're assuming is that there's 12 values in here. We're assuming that they're all evenly spread out. Now, this is an assumption. We have no idea well, how, how spread out they are, but this is as best as we can. This is why this thing is an estimate as opposed to actually finding the median. So it's as good as we can go. It's an estimate. Okay, the biggest thing you could possibly be in this is set is going to be 74.499999 or 74.5 so we're going to say it's 74.5 so if we're on our 20th value and we need to get to our 24 and a half value we need to go four and a half more values in so we need to go 4.5 More values into the next class. What was our next class? The next class was 75 to 79. Okay, right. So we our median is going to be in this class basically. So the width of that class, we need to find that out. So the class width is equal to, remember it's the upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary. So the upper class boundary of that thing would be really strictly would be 79.5 and the lower class boundary is 74.5.
Okay, so we need to find our median. Median n is going to be equal to, let's just go back to that formula we had earlier on, which didn't mean anything to us, hopefully it meant a wee bit more to us. We want our lower boundary plus the number of items required, number of terms required, divided by the frequency in the group and times a class width. Okay, let's see if that means any more to us now. So our 20th value was, our 20th value we said was equal to 74.5. So that was, and notice 74.5 is a lower class boundary of the, the class that, we're, our, that our median is in. So this one, and then we needed to go 4.5 more values into it, into our, it was our, sorry, it was our uh, 75 to 79 class. The width of that class, sorry, the frequency of that class was, 14 and the width of that class was 5. So let's see how that compares to that formula. Lower boundary plus the number of items required. So this is how many items we needed to go into the class to find the thing. The frequency in that cl the class containing the median and then times the class width. So if we go back and again once you've done a lot that is just firing it into your calculator. So 74.5 plus 4.5 over 14 times 5 which is going to be 76.1 uh kilograms it's going to be in this case and that's the three sig figs okay you're now ready to do page five exercise 2c and if you just did questions one two one two three and four quite there's question five and six there which you don't need to do but if you want a wee bit more practice on that it's fine